It's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in on another assertiveness tool on handling covert narcissistic individuals, overt narcissistic individuals, or psychopathic individuals. And that is declaring your boundaries and not stooping to their level, not reflecting back the same en negative energy that they will project out into their relationships how not to absorb this, but furthermore, how not to mimic it, how not to stay on that level, how not how to break free and not be part of those games, not be part of those patterns of behavior, how not to mirror back to them the same negative energy with which they thrust into relationships through the things that they say, their body language, the phone calls, their texting, the emails, the Instagram, the Snapchat. The narcissist individual will constantly be caught up in behaviors which are meant to keep them at the focal point, meant to keep them at the center of attention, meant to keep a lot of gossip going, a lot of triangulation, a lot of superficial compliments that really don't get one anywhere. They're very unproductive. In fact, oftentimes they're very distracting. It's very important not to mirror back that same energy to them, not to exist in the same energetic level. They are caught up in a whole different energetic frequency. By energy frequency, we mean emotion. Emotion is energy in motion. It is your feeling. It is your value. It is your proposition that you feel about a event, a location, a person, your emotion is your energy in motion. So it, it's a very active feeling within the body and the narcissist, their emotional mindset, their attitude, their approach is what can I do to manipulate and control the situation so that I am looking good. I am better than others. I have all the attention on me. And furthermore, chances are someone else is going to pay the price for me looking like the good guy or the good girl. Because of their lack of empathy, they do not understand the feelings, needs, wishes of another. And furthermore, they're not able not only to acknowledge, they're not able to validate. So it's really very a very disrespectful sort of energy vibration that they will emit. It's a very disrespectful personality, if you will, character disorder with which they embody. So there's an energy. Every person emits an energy from them. The body has energy centers. Uh, most uh, energy is around the heart. Um, you know, there's energy around the mind, but really the true energy emanates from the heart center. This has been measured uh, by neuro uh, neuroscience and really there's quite an energetic vibration just like you know you can feel energy from someone's hands you can feel the energetic vibration and oftentimes people have very healing touch feeling hands so that's why we have you know massages which are uh, very healing there's a, an energy which comes from the from the hands and you can feel the energy if you go like this with your hands so you can oftentimes feel an energetic field um, an energetic an energetic feel emanates from an individual so when we talk about a radiant individual, we, we talk about the energy with which they emit, their personality. Oftentimes this is uh, derived as a charisma. And the uh, charisma oftentimes emanates from a psychopath or a narcissistic individual based on their hormones, based on their sex energy, and it's not always heart-centered. But yet a lot of people feel drawn or attracted to this energy because it has such a strong presence. And the presence, um, now that we're talking about energy, there, uh, especially with character disordered or manipulative individuals, such as psychopathic, they emit a very strong energetic field because of a heightened eleva uh, elevation of testosterone and dopamine in their neurochemistry. So oftentimes what you feel around a psychopathic individual is a heightened element um, or a heightened amount of testosterone, which is a very aggressive hormone. So when we talk about people being aggressive, people being, you know, kind of out there um, where, you know, generally there's a high level of testosterone 
and studies have been done, uh, done um, to measure the testosterone, and oftentimes those individuals uh, with psychopathic uh, tendencies or traits have a heightened level of testosterone. And the heightened level of testosterone, that sex hormone, um, also creates a, um, a heightened level of dopamine, which is a reward-seeking neurotransmitter. So the, dope, the testosterone also creates less empathy. So in other words, it causes them to be highly driven, highly reward-seeking behavior, but oftentimes high risk, and without the sensitivity or consciousness or empathy towards others. So as you can see, this high drive, this high testosterone, coupled with a lack of empathy, causes them to seek attention-seeking behaviors, oftentimes at the expense or the insensitivity of others. And so they will constantly have in focus what they want, need to be, do, and have, oftentimes at the expense of others and at the insensitivity of others. So it's very important that you do not get allured, seduced, or trapped into this energy which you might feel surrounding a narcissistic or psychopathic individual. And this, in, in essence, in the beginning is what people experience in the beginning is that the love bombing or this infatuation where people feel swept up. They feel captivated by this individual. There's something that's different about them. There's something that's unique. There's something that's overpowering. And there's something that just makes you feel so at ease. But really what you're, what you're experiencing is a, a lack a, or a loss of yourself in a lack of your boundaries. It's an annihilation of your boundaries. And you don't begin it, you don't understand it in the beginning that this love bombing oftentimes is solidified in the annihilating or reducing or basically uh, erasing of your boundaries. It's, it's a, 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 a letting go of your boundaries. So those are annihilated. Uh, there's a word that I'm looking for. Um, really, I think violation is the word that I'm looking for. There's a violation of your boundaries. And you don't realize it in the beginning, that that violation, destruction, reduction of those boundaries, you're not able to still feel those in place. So you feel this oceanic feeling, this awesome feeling uh, with these individuals. And this is very pleasurable in the beginning, but yet once this has occurred, you find that this individual then creates this heightened or idealized or superior sense in your life. They tend to then overpower you. And furthermore, you give up responsibility for yourself and assign it over to this narcissistic controlling and manipulative individual. So then they have the power over you and dictate your life in very sort of subtle ways. And I think anyone has, who has been through uh, narcissistic emotional abuse, physical abuse, has felt this violation of boundaries and this assigning of, you are better than me, you are superior to me. Yes, I do give in, I am a supply to you. So even though this isn't verbalized, this isn't articulated, it's what occurs on the subconscious level. And that is what we need to heal from. That is what you need to recover from. And that is what you need to come to the other side in declaring yourself and valuing yourself as an individual and acknowledging that you have a lot to give and not the devalued, discarded personality and that sort of energetic vibration that you take with you as a result. So it's very important to be clear that you do not need to get seduced by this energetic vibration from a narcissistic or manipulative individual. It's very important that you shield yourself. It's very important that you protect yourself. It's very important that you do not give in. And you can do this in a number of ways. You shield yourself physically by not just standing in that energy. You can physically distance yourself. You can physically dis um, position yourself so that you're deflecting the energy. So realize that the energy can come forward off of their body and you can deflect it by turning your shoulder. So in essence, your shoulder and then it's moving past you. You can 
furthermore, uh, keep the and rehearsing the mental rehearsing of the I am while you're in their presence. And this is a new tool. And I want you to definitely use those affirmations even while you're in the presence of these individuals. If you find yourself having to be around them or you work with them or they're in your family or you're presently married or you're working through a divorce, you need to keep that mental rehearsal going on of your I am statements and keep asserting those and using those and living those and being those and communicating those while you're with a narcissist or as a tool healing so you get used to having this new energetic vibration and not picking up their negative toxic energy that is coming off of them. It is very true. Uh, a narcissist can be like an energy vampire. You will feel uh, depressed. You will feel depleted. You will feel exhausted. It is because literally they're swooping off your energy as you are a supply to them. And it's in varying degrees and levels. So it's important to not get caught up, not get seduced, not get sucked in. Declare yourself, declare your boundaries, declare your personal I am statements and live by your values, your own position, your own perspective and protect your energy, shield it from narcissistic, psychopathic individuals who will seek to utilize your energy as their supply. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.